Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at I.O. in a more general fashion. Of course, when we see a picture of I.O., the first thing that pops out is we've never seen anything like it. It's almost unreal. It's almost unbelievable that something like this could actually exist, that it's actually a moon. It looks more like a picture of a pizza with the ingredients kind of spread around everywhere. But no, it is indeed a moon, and that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like that in those beautiful colors of yellow and brown and red and black and white and some green in there all come from the combinations of sulfuric compounds and so we'll see that in a little bit more detail later. If you compare the size of Io to the size of our moon they're very similar in size just slightly larger than our moon and they're compared to the size of the earth. And notice there's some amazing features around some of the more active volcanoes with large swaths of red and white color. And again, we'll get into the details as to why they're there. But in general, you can say that Io is the innermost of the four Galilean moons. It's only a little bit over 400,000 kilometers away, which is slightly farther away than our moon is away from the Earth. It is the third largest moon of the four uh, Jovian planets. It has the highest density and therefore probably the largest iron core of the four moons. And it also has the highest surface gravity that of course comes from the moon being fairly large and the fact that it has the highest density. It has also the lowest water content of any body in the solar system, which is kind of interesting. There's virtually no water of any sort, at the, even at the atomic level, on Io. It was discovered in 1610. Of course, it was discovered along with the other three Jovian planets, and therefore uh, they all were discovered in 1610 by Galileo. What's interesting is that it has over 400 active volcan volcanoes. It is the most volcanically active body in the solar system by far. Every time we have a satellite that flies past Io and takes pictures, we see multiple volcanoes erupting all at the same time. I believe at one point, one of the pictures that was taken, they saw nine volcanoes that were actively erupting at the same time. The reason why there's so many active volcanoes is because the interior of Io is heated due to tidal friction, primarily tidal friction, not so much the decay of the nuclear decay of uh, radioactive elements within the moon itself. There's some of that, but the vast majority of the heat comes from the tidal friction, and it's because of this, this, um, uh, this orbital synchronization between it and the other moons and then of course the large jo the large planet Jupiter that pulls on the other direction and so it's the, the moon is constantly being squeezed and pulled and squeezed and pulled from one direction of the moon the moons on one side and then Jupiter on the other side and so whenever there's synchronization they come together there's a pull in one direction other times there's a pull in the opposite direction so that pull that constantly changes is due to the uh, the synchronization and also since it's not a perfectly elliptical orbit as it gets closer to Jupiter the forces become stronger as it's a little further away from Jupiter the forces become a little bit weaker and that also tends to stretch and pull the moon causing all that frictional heat and that's because that's why it is so volcanically active. There's also regular mountains to be found over 100 mountains and some of them larger or taller than Mount Everest. So the average mountain is several kilometers, two, three, four, five kilometers in height, and some of them are even higher than Mount Everest. So there's a lot of mountains there as well. And what's interesting is that those mountains are not due to the volcanic activity, but due to uplifting the same kind of activity that causes Earth to have mountain ranges, the same kind of activity is happening on Io, pushing them up and folding them. And therefore we have over a hundred noteworthy mountains on that moon. The mantle is mostly made out of silicon rock, although it does have a fair amount of sulfur within it, but the, the biggest part of the component is silicon, just like it is on the Earth. And the core is iron or iron sulfide. They're not quite sure if it's purely iron or there's an iron sulfide mixture in there. And depending upon which way it is, the core is either a little bit small if it's pure iron or a little bit bigger if it's iron sulfide to account for that particular density of the moon. 
The colors that we see is yellow, red, white, brown, black, and green. They're all caused by the allotropes and compounds made of sulfur. Allotropes means that sulfur can exist in different types of structures. Each one of them causes different colors. And so having compounds and the allotropes, all the various combinations of them, causes all those various colors to exist. That's why we have those beautiful colors in I.O. There's enormous lava flows. The, the volcanic eruptions are enormous. It spews lava and dust and gas hundreds of miles or hundreds of kilometers up above the surface of the moon, then spreads back onto the surface. And so we have these large lava flows. Turns out that some volcanoes are active for many, many years in a row, causing these huge outflows of, um, of um, lava. We can see that there's always multiple volcanoes erupting at the same time, so it's a very, very active moon. And therefore, we have a thin atmosphere. A lot of the gases do get trapped gravitationally for some time before they get ripped away from the surface due to the magnetic uh, field interaction with the strong magnetic field of Jupiter and the ionization of the region around which uh, Io has its orbit around Jupiter. There's a lot of interaction between particles in space and Jupiter uh, Io slamming into them and then the, the uh, uh, magnetic field causing the particles to be pulled away from the surface but enough of them stay within Io for a period of time before they get pulled away so that we have a thin atmosphere. The, the atmosphere does change a lot between day and night and between various regions on the moon and so we'll take a look at that as well. We have a large orbital plasma torus that goes all the way around Jupiter where uh, Io orbits. Io is in the middle of that torus. It's a very large ring of charged and uncharged particles that are ripped off the surface of the moon due to the volcanic activity. They're present and then the, the various forces rip them off, but they cause this large torus to exist around, um, around Jupiter. And, and of course, Io then slams into those particles has a lot, of, a lot of interaction with them. And then the first Good pictures that we took of the moon Io were taken in 1979 when Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 made it to Jupiter. Uh, Voyager 1 especially got very close to the planet and was able to take some really nice photographs. Voyager 2 didn't get quite as close. There were some spacecraft that made it there earlier, about six years earlier, but because they, were, they weren't aware that there was a lot of magnetic field strength, a lot of charged particles that cause an enormous amount of radiation to exist and an enormous amount of voltage to exist there. The spacecraft that went through them essentially broke down the, the, the um, instruments on board, did suffer from the interaction with that radiation, the interaction with the magnetic field, and we didn't get a lot of data back from them and the pictures that we got were definitely not the pictures we were hoping to get because the breakdown of the equipment. So we got a little smarter and made sure that we tried to stay outside some of those dangerous regions so that the spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 could survive and take these nice pictures. So the whole idea is to stay away from those dangerous regions around Jupiter where the spacecraft simply doesn't have protection against that amount of radiation. So that's the general description of the of the moon Io and we'll get now into some of the more details of this amazing moon in the videos to come.